Welcome to Plugged In Chat. I'm Kent, your business podcast episode, I think, 33. I think we're at 33. Uh, I'm Andrew. I work in China Company Economic Development, and sitting beside me is. Who hi. are you? I'm <laughs> hi, Andrew. I'm Jocelyn Cranebrink. I'm a lawyer with Whittle and Company Law Firm. Wonderful. And then we have the famous. Famous, not so much. I'm Dan Whittle, uh, also a lawyer at Whittle and Company Law Firm. Well, we had Rachel on a little while ago, and yeah. so she gave us all your background information and all your details. So right. uh, if people need to have a nice, embarrassing moment, they can go on and listen to the previous right. one. Uh, I, I understand you were talking about my hair, so I had to make sure it was looking good. This <laughs> it's good, yeah. So uh, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> well, thanks for both being here. This is this is fantastic. Thanks for having us. Um, and uh, we were chatting beforehand. That this has been, we said a busy year, but you said it's been a busy all of it, like life. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. uh, what's going on? What's, what's happening? What's, what's 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 new and exciting? Let's right. start with Dan. On this sure. Yeah. What's new and exciting? Yeah. yeah. Uh, for, uh, uh, a couple of new things happening with uh, with the law firm. Um, we are uh, we've opened a new location in Ridgetown that oh. just opened uh, at the beginning of January, and we've taken over the practice of of Ed Little, uh, and Ed is continuing to work with us uh, out there as he phases into retirement. Um, so he's still present in the office there, um, with our lawyers from our office also going and working out there as well. The goal is to continue to have a presence of local lawyers in Ridgetown because there's been a, a number of lawyers who have retired out there. So we want to make sure that that service level stays there as well so it doesn't result in, in the, the people in Ridgetown needing to drive uh, to Chatham or sometimes even farther to get uh, legal services. So it's it's worked well, yeah. Well, that's and, good. That's exciting. And one of the things, because uh, as I was talking about Rachel, she reached out and said you've launched a new service, which is panoramic plan based on estate planning. Yeah, that's right. right. That's so, right. Uh, and you're the expert, right? Jonathan? Yes, yes. So. I'm the brainchild. That's what my mom calls me. Oh, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what what is it? What is this? Uh, what's uh, estate planning? I already know can be a huge deal. And uh, listening to CBC this morning, by the way, oh. and they were talking about this is the not depressing. I apologize if it sounds like that but they were talking about death cleaning i don't know if you've heard of this term where you go in and you're cleaning out your home but i guess with the idea of saying this heirloom is really important to me and passing it on to your family members but with a story attached to it which mm, i think is always really good. nice right yeah, that's great uh rather than just yeah. things sitting on the shelf and having to deal with them afterwards so yeah. i think that's really nice that's very yeah. sweet uh, yes, but that's is. not estate planning estate planning is totally different right or is it no you tell me yeah actually andrew that's um i'm really glad you brought that up because um, our panoramic plan is meant to be more than what was traditionally understood as estate planning. Okay. So estate planning itself can be quite confusing for people. Sometimes we think of estates and we think of Jane Austen and these great glorious manors and grounds and Obviously. right like we're going to this, <laughs> the estate of and people think well I don't have an estate you know um, I've heard that actually from clients before. Uh, you know, grandma died, but don't worry, there's no estate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually there is. <laughs> um, so because estate planning is um, getting ready for essentially what happens to everything that you're connected to after you've passed away. Mm. And at Whittle & Company Law Firm, we see that more than just the stuff or the assets you leave behind. We see that as the legacy that you leave behind, which is your relationships with your family and your loved ones. Yeah. And we see also, the, unfortunately, the problems that you leave behind. <laughs> um, you know, I joke with my clients that um, it, sometimes it's, it's the, the people who don't clean up their messes before they go that keep our lights on, right? Because... <laughs> And Most then, people don't have to, you know, they pay the bills. Most people don't have to call a lawyer unless something's gone wrong. And um, it's very, very expensive after the fact um, for people to uh, clean up these messes. When I'm talking about messes, I'm, I'm saying litigation. People are fighting over things. And you'd be surprised what people fight over. Sometimes people will tell me, oh, this is my favorite. I, you know, I need a simple will. I don't I don't have anything. Um, you know, not, they, they, they think... They seem to think that they'll leave no footprint when they leave behind, like mm -hmm. that they'll leave behind, but it's not true at all. Um, in, in your estate is much more than your assets, but even if you're somebody who, you know, doesn't own a home, people think, oh, I don't own a home. I don't, I need to wor worry about, you know, anything behind. But as we are increasingly more and more in a digital age, mm -hmm. we're leaving not just a footprint in our relationships and a footprint at our bank, <laughs> you know, with our assets, but we're leaving a digital footprint behind. Mm -hmm. And this is a really exciting area of law. Um, and, you know, what 
I, one of the reasons I'm, I'm really excited to practice um, estates is because it, you'd think it's something that um, just sort of stays the same, but no, it, it's, it's growing. And one of the areas that's really growing right now is in digital assets because they're so new Mm -hmm. um, and people are are figuring out right now what's going to happen to them after I pass. And all of those questions, a lot of those haven't even been answered yet. So we're having people come to me where there's there's maybe assets that are being missed or there's assets that they can't access or there's assets that there's no game plan for how they're going to be passed on. And these assets can be... um, financial so mm-hmm. they can be like serious financial value in some of these assets but they can also be um just as valuable because they're sentimental right think about all of your videos your photos that you're keeping in clouds um we just take it for granted that we pick up our phone we put in our password and we can access all of that stuff but if i was to pass away like who knows my phone password and um how then are those who who owns those assets right if i'm yeah. if i'm storing them in someone's cloud well maybe that that clouds thinking well no those are my assets like and you don't even have the authority to give them to someone else after you've passed away and those mm-hmm. are things that people don't think about when you just click 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 terms and condition okay and these yeah. are the things that we're thinking about and like i said if you get me going i will not stop talking so <laughs> this is really just one little area of our of our panoramic plan yeah. I'm, I, so I'm curious. I'm thinking about biz, the business aspect of yes. it as well. Yes, uh, huge. It used to be really simple. I have a traditional brick and mortar store, right. and if somebody passes away, you put a sign on that says "closed," and it was very simple. But now you can have these Shopify, you can have these Etsy stores that yes. are c- still running. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah. and that yeah. must be that must introduce quite quite a bit of new aspect, especially as you talk about digital. So absolutely, are you encountering yeah. that kind of conversation yet? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, yeah. What what sort of, I mean, I'm not going to ask a big broad question. What sure. sort of advice can you give in terms of, say, an Etsy or, or, or a Shopify store? How does that become something that can pass on? Uh, or, or is that a big conversation? No, it, it is a big conversation, <laughs> but it's a great conversation to have. And we can give, you know, I, I'm, I always explain to my clients that I'm a big picture person. I'll give mm-hmm. you the big picture first and then we'll go down to the nitty gritty, gritty sure. details. So these questions are great. Do you want to address sure, that? Sure, yeah, yeah, I can start okay. as the... Yeah. So the way we work together is mm-hmm. um, I'm, I'm kind of the business lawyer. I, I deal with local corporations and, and small business owners and entrepreneurs. And so when you talk about something like that, that's probably um, where I would become involved as well to make sure that we have a game plan in place. And that's, okay. that's really it. Kind of the answer yeah. to the question is, first of all, that it's being considered um, because mm-hmm. a lot of times Absolutely. that's just not... No, we even thought of that, right? Absolutely. Nobody thinks... Unless you're you're really elderly and you're you know planning your death, nobody really thinks they're gonna die, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, anytime soon. That's well, usually my goal is two hundred and forty nine, somewhere around well, that age. Somewhere there. Yeah. I yeah. think I'm gonna <laughs> step back. So so that's my plan. Right? This is it. That's yeah. that's right. And so as a short answer, it's well, let's consider it and talk yeah. it through and talk about yeah. who then could have access to that and make sure that money that's coming in is being administered properly and according to your wishes. That kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing with with the panoramic plan. The idea behind it is uh, moving away from what I would call the traditional model of estate planning, where you go to a lawyer's office, it's a brief meeting where you basically say, here's who my executor is going to be, my beneficiaries, and then there's not a whole lot of of digging deeper and and Mm -hmm. finding out, are we really addressing all the needs? And that's a perfect example, right? Okay. With uh, if they're you know business owners, all the things that need to be addressed there. If you have young kids, what exactly is your plan? It's true that part of the the traditional approach is to name a guardian. What about in the interim? What if your guardian lives in North Bay, Ontario, and yeah. you just passed away, and your spouse has passed away too? There's no interim plan. Nobody really addresses that in the traditional approach. Mm-hmm. And so in a panoramic plan, we make sure to ask those questions and say, have you thought about that? Let's work through that together. And again, these are just a couple of exam- yeah. examples. Sure. Yeah. Jocelyn's been been working for, for over a year on, on preparing this and asking these questions, doing the research to come up with answers, yeah. calling you know the, the Children's Aid Society and saying, what does in fact happen if both parents are gone? and there isn't anybody nearby who's able to take care of the kids. How can we address that? That kind of, of thing. Sure. And it's it was amazing and actually somewhat alarming to me as a parent of young children. <laughs> uh, that's something that, my goodness, that I should be addressing in, in my plan too. And, you know, so, so going forward, moving away from the traditional plan, it's, uh, and going, you know, panoramic, it's, it's, it's being much more thorough 
and making sure that we're slowing down. It's not a one and done kind of situation. It's a relationship with, with our office that we have with our clients so that we can, we, we really understand what's going on, all the issues that we need to be addressing. And then we make a plan to go forward where mm -hmm. let's talk again in mm -hmm. two years, five years to make sure that everything that we just did is still in place. Mm -hmm. And now I'm the one who's going on and on. <laughs> no, but you We're just my... so passionate about <laughs> this because we, we really actually are. Like yeah. this is just well, a great product. You answered my yeah. question a little about how often you want to revisit this mm, because life okay. changes, yeah. right? That's right. That's um, right. Yep. People move yep. on to different jobs and careers yes. and families. families and yep. Exactly. Yep. So, that's the thing. Yep. so every two or three years you recommend sort of going back and having a look or maybe life event. Would that be fair? That's, that's part of it too. Yes. And that's usually... Yep. Um, there might be a, a change in circumstance that might not even kind of trigger that for someone like, oh, that's that's going to be a change that I need to uh, implement into my estate plan. And so even if we say, okay, yes, life event, contact us if you get divorced, you get married, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm, sure. But then also, maybe we just make it so there's a periodic little update where we just kind of just touch base, make sure things are going okay and, yeah. and go from there. Great. Yeah. Now, part of this, uh, have you developed sort of a checklist of things, or how, oh, how, how do you? So many checklists, oh, you Andrew. Seem so yeah, I love checklists. <laughs> yeah, my clients come in with paper, and I'm like, get so happy, my heart starts to swell because That's awesome. I love checklists and documentation, and yeah, we lots of them. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else is really important for people to know about this this type of planning? Because obviously, it's a little different than as you said. What we've it's done very different. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing maybe that I could just cover first is um, we really want to do a better job at making sure we connect with other professionals that are involved in the estate planning process. Mm -hmm. So it's financial advisors, yes. yeah. um, insurance salespeople, yeah. the, the bank, all those things. The way that we did it before was that we would say, okay, you, you told us that you have life insurance. Mm -hmm. Go back to your insurance advisor and make sure that they update your beneficiaries for your life insurance in a way that's appropriate. And we kind of leave it at that and say, there you go, there's your homework, yeah. okay. without any okay. follow-up. And, and that's kind of just how it is. Um, with the panoramic plan, we actually say, let us talk to your life insurance provider. Yeah. We'll make sure that what's happening there really jives well with your estate and what we've done here. So the will is kind of like, the, the keystone in the arch, it's the important document that makes yeah. everything come together. Yeah. But if other things aren't fitting in the way they should, the will can be wonderful, mm -hmm. but the whole estate plan isn't fitting together very well. So it's that, again, panoramic, it's the broader picture, making yeah. sure we're pulling in all the different aspects and everyone that should be involved to make sure that they also understand the full picture and have a better idea of what they're doing and their professional advice and how that will affect the big picture. That's right. How would you recommend that you start to have the family members start to have those conversations? Because oh. that's the mm -hmm. that's a hard part, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so one of the the things that has really helped me to gain perspective on preparing and and looking into the things like Dan was um, mentioning that I've been researching all these different tools that I can offer to people. Part of my practice is estate planning. So it's yeah. talking with people about, okay, what's going to happen if you pass, if and when you pass away, right? The other half of my practice is estate administration. So that's when I'm working with people after someone has passed away. So someone's coming in and saying, you know, um, dad passed, um, I, you know, his, his will names me uh, the executor. My brothers and sisters are the other beneficiaries. This is very typical for Chatham Kent, right? Sure. Mom's already gone. Um, and I'm walking them through that process and I'm getting to see in like sadly through the real life experiences of my clients mm -hmm. where things are getting tangled up and okay. where oh man if I had gotten to talk to dad before he passed away we could have we could have fixed this and ironed this out and saved you you know so much time so much energy so, sometimes so much money like a mm -hmm. lot of times so much money because if someone's in my office then they're having to pay somebody mm -hmm. and probably more more you know, other fees that are coming into that picture. Um, and one of the main things that I have seen work very, very well is communication. Mm -hmm. So when I am dealing with people coming to the table after someone has passed, and so we're dealing with an estate, the people that have the biggest, I guess, edge on the other, even though it's not a competition, um, but if you were going to look at, okay, what's the ideal situation? The, the people who have the ideal situation in an already hard situation are the ones that have had those family talks that that have 
talked about this stuff, even though it was uncomfortable, even though it was difficult, um, especially where uh, there was conflict in the family. Yeah. Um, so, you know, someone is dealing with addiction or someone um, is has just always been the black sheep and you just know, you know, like brother so-and-so is going to cause trouble, right? Um, if there have been those conversations beforehand, the people that are walking it out are much more at peace because they know, okay, we talked about this with mom. We talked about this with dad. Like we know yeah. what they would have wanted in this situation. You can't plan for everything because we can't see the future, but there are conversations that can be had. And your question was, where can those conversations start? Yeah. And the truth is it's going to be different for every family, which is mm-hmm. why in Panoramic, we take the time to get to know our clients, the the first thing that they have to do is fill out this very in-depth questionnaire. And sometimes they're saying, man, why do you want to know? Like, if there's conflict in my family or how well we all get along, well, as soon as we start talking about it, they start to understand why. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if we've red flagged or they've red flagged where, yeah, you know, like I don't, ugh, it's, it's awkward at Thanksgiving sometimes, right? Which it all it is for all of us, but sure. some more than others. Or if we've got a plan where... Um, it's it's um, outside of the norm or what people would have expected. So back in the day, um, when when we talk about the traditional approach to estate planning, traditionally, everybody looked the same. You know, you had a nuclear family, mom and dad, kids, everybody, you know, grew up and lived and died in the same town and took over dad's business or whatever, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, it was a very, very simple, like, okay, mom and dad die, they leave everything to each other, and then when they're both gone, everything's divided equally among the kids. Well... When that doesn't go the way, that, that's sort of expected, but it, mm-hmm. it often doesn't go that way for lots of different reasons. But if we've got an estate plan where maybe someone's getting more than another, or a really great example is farming, right? You've got three kids, brother Billy's taking over the farm with dad, and, you know, sister Sally and Lynn, Lindsay, I don't know, I'm, I'm, these are not real clients, I'm protecting <laughs> identities, these are like people, but that are just coming out of my imagination. You know who you are, Lynn. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you, you <laughs> call me. <laughs> um, they're going to get the, they're going to get the um, liquid assets divided among them, right? Mm-hmm. And because Brother Billy farms with dad, he's going to get the farm. Well, when we really look at it on paper, the farm is worth millions of dollars. Absolutely. Lindsay and whoever, Sally, or maybe they both walk away with quite a bit of money, but it's, it's, not. it's an unequal division. Yeah. It's a really good time to have conversations about why that's happening mm-hmm. and um, getting people prepared so that when mom and dad are both gone and the will is read and everybody thinks it was going to go one way or one person thinks it was going to go one way and it didn't, yeah. you've got grievances that can be aired while everyone is, quite frankly, still alive to talk about it yeah. and to reconcile. Um, and it actually part of one of the services in our panoramic plan is what we call the family um, conference and then also the family constitution where we would have everybody come together and mom and dad, you know, just this can be anybody, but explain this is why we're doing what we're doing. Ooh, like so-and-so gets a chance to, to say, well, I kind of expected it to go this way or I don't feel like that's fair. We come together and it, that's that can be a mediated meeting, mm-hmm. especially if we realize there's going to be conflict. Um, so that conversation can be very managed by our firm or it can be as simple as coaching. Like I'm talking to them like, you know what, like you should probably have this conversation. And then my clients are like, oh, I, I talked to so-and-so. It went really great. Okay. And in my in my checklist, yeah. I check the box. Okay, everybody's on board, mm-hmm. right? Where we're, where we're really paving the way to what everybody says they always want when they sit in my office to get their wills done is I just want to leave it smooth. I just want to want to like sure. leave everybody to leave behind. I don't want them to have any problems. I just want it to be simple and easy. Mm-hmm. We got to do the work beforehand if we want it to be simple and easy. Yeah, right. for when it actually plays out. And I think of the, the farming is an excellent example because I know farmers around this area. Yeah. Um, it, it isn't a simple matter of like I okay. I've got a tractor from 1954. Its value two thousand yeah. dollars. The average tractor I'm seeing in equipment can be five hundred thousand dollars. It's more than my house, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And and it's not as though they're walking in going here's the cash i'll take that that's right it so those farms could be worth tens hundreds of millions of dollars but also have equal types of debts sitting that's against right. them for yep. equipment and yep. seeds and contracts yep. in the right. futures yep. and so it's it, it, it can be very complicated it uh, can be very complicated. and i mean you're yep. the experts on this i'm sure right. you've right. been dealing with this that's uh, right uh and so that's it's really important to have these conversations i yeah. think ahead of time and that's that's one of the reasons i want to have you in here is that yeah. we're 
in economic development, we deal with farming families sure. all the time. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so it, it's really important to bring those things up, even if they aren't a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. so, so thank you for bringing that up. Um, it, you got me thinking. So family conversations. I'm not going to give all the details or call up my father on this, but <laughs> I'm willing a little bit. Uh, so I said to him, I said to him, so what should I know? What kind mm. of things are going to stand in the way? And he said to me, you know, come to think of it, I've had a lot of bank accounts over the years. Great. Oh, yeah. oh Dad. And I, yeah. I, That's exactly it. He goes, I don't think I've ever closed one. Oh. And I said, right. oh. now, do you mean bank accounts? Is in one bank? He said, no. No, he doesn't. Banks. Because he's of a certain generation yes. where... Mm-hmm. You don't put all your eggs in one basket. Exactly. That's, their, that's the mentality. And yeah. so you're encountering yeah. this. I'm glad very, to very hear much. that yeah. this is something... You're not alone. I'm not alone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, what's your advice on how I should tell him? Because uh, I already told him. Could you simplify this? But yeah. how do you? How would you simplify something to that sort of situation? What would be? Or how? How does that tie into the estate discovery process for That's you? That's a great term, estate discovery. <laughs> I, I call it a treasure hunt for my treasure estate hunt. trustees Ooh. or my executors who have to make these. It sounds way funner than it is because <laughs> really, what they're doing is having to either go through all of, you know, mountains of documentation that has been left behind, you know, in piles, because most people aren't that organized in whoever's passed away's house, looking for bank statements and and pulling one and saying, Simply Financial, I had no idea they had a Simply Financial account, and then hoping, really, that they get it all. And Mm -hmm. every year, there are millions of dollars that are unclaimed for this very reason. Um, but the question of what to do is there's there's two sides of that. So it's it's what to do for you as an onlooker, mm-hmm. saying this is going to be basically it's going to be your job. Yay! But you re- <laughs> yeah, right. but you really don't have the authority to do anything about it. So yeah. the there's what can you do as the um, you know person who will be cleaning up, doing the treasure hunt, mm-hmm. and then what can the person do who whose treasure it actually is, mm-hmm. right? Um, and those are two very different, uh, it's, it's a, it's a diff, it's a frustrating position to be in as a beneficiary or as a child, as a future executor, because you actually have no authority until it's almost too late to change anything. You're just kind of cleaning up a mess. It sounds mean to say it that way, but that's, that's what it is yeah. often, not necessarily your dad's, but I've seen lots of messes, sure. right? Yeah. Um, uh, and so I would just... <laughs> The, so one of the really big keys for panoramic plan is empowering our clients. Okay. A lot of people don't understand the implications of what they're doing now or what they're not doing now and how that would play out. So there's a really good chance that your dad has no idea the implication that he, when he's saying, I got bank accounts, I don't know where they are, I've never closed them, there might be some stuff in there. He doesn't know what that's actually going to mean for you when the time comes, right? And so one of the things that we want to get out there is for people to understand, yes, you do have an estate. You know, Mm -hmm. you may not be in that Jane Austen novel, but um, you do. And you're going to leave behind a footprint that someone is going to be taking care of. Um, And so understanding every person leaves behind a different footprint. And so you can't, there's no cookie cutter way to deal with it. There's no Mm -hmm. cookie cutter way to address that. Every person is unique. And the way to find out what they can be doing is to be come into the knowledge and that power themselves. And that's what we're trying to to give. To, an, yeah. an easy way to do that, too, sometimes in, in the initial meeting that, that you would have with clients, sometimes you would say, let's look at, at what you have in place now and let's talk through what that would look like if you were to pass away now. Yes. And we do do that. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. And it's that's it right. kind of it helps kind of make things a little bit more real. Like, oh, that's that's how that would work. That's mm-hmm. not what I intended mm-hmm. at all. Yeah. Right. And then we talk about well, how can we fix that? How can we make sure that what you have in place truly reflects what your intentions are? Yeah. And so that's that's that would be something that if if your father were in front of us, we would <laughs> yes, maybe talk much. that through yeah. and talk about yeah. the the, yeah. the many yeah. accounts and things uh, like that. He's been good. I've had that conversation in in the garage while we work on a car. <laughs> good. Uh, See, it, you got this. Oh, I, yes. I, I I do, but I was still willing to listen if there's any extra tips in there that, <laughs> yes. but but so yeah it be, unfortunately i'm in a position where he's been receptive to go home oh, yeah. well, which is huge right but that's, because yeah there are those people who are not receptive yeah 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 um anything else we need to know about this uh that i should share 
because I have a I have a thank you uh, for going out and doing the will clinics that you're doing uh, around the community. So, oh, they're so much fun. Um, yeah. I, I think the last one was in Wallaceburg, if I remember correctly. You've been doing them around. <laughs> I think Catherine did one in Dresden. Dresden? Yeah. yeah okay. Right. Yeah. Um, for those who don't know, describe what, what what's the what's the will clinic? You've been out doing these in, yeah. in the community, and so that's a, I can start and yeah, then I'll yeah, yeah. take over. Yeah. That's that's done in. It's actually in partnership with um, the Ontario Bar Association and then the Public Libraries, the Chatham Camp mm-hmm. Public Library. And so it's just a, a free information se- uh, session just to get out there and to, to, like we said, equip people with information. Yeah. Uh, because when it comes to estate planning, there's a lot of myths. There's a lot of yes. things that, that just aren't understood. So just giving basic information and helping people know what exactly, what's an executor? How do you choose one? Mm-hmm. What's a beneficiary? Simple things like that. If people are armed with that knowledge, they can start to make decisions and, yeah. and to, to plan and inventory and decide what, what exactly they'll do for themselves. So Joss yeah. has actually taken the lead in, in doing a lot of those sessions, and I think they've, they've gone quite well. Yeah, they're really fun. Yeah. So what I've heard so far is that you do all the work, <laughs> but you get put the name on the that, that's, that's, that's good. It's a good strategy. As a business wait, wait, owner, that's wait. a good strategy. I didn't know where I wanted to <laughs> No, no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But, <laughs> but, but no, but thank you for, for going out and doing that. I think that's an important thing to bring to our community. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's it our helps. pleasure. It really is. Yeah. So yeah. That, Dan is being modest. He's done, he's done many of these I, too. I know. Yes. I've heard yeah. all of the great work you're doing. So yeah. I really just yeah. teach. Sure. Uh, no, that's, that's but, fine. <laughs> so there's Will Week. I don't know if you saw that. You mentioned that you were seeing our, our feed on, on, on Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, yeah, that's that's something. Speaking of seminars, that's something that is an important uh, kind of a thing as well. Um, Will Week is something we've done for quite a while. Is this our 10th year? I don't know. I think I saw that somewhere. That This is the 10th year oh, that, that we've done Will right. Week. Wow. Um, it started just as me um, not having an office space. Meeting in De Coco's Cafe, which maybe is before your time. That was on 4th Street. That was, that was and a long time ago. They, yeah. they had a little boardroom in the back. And I'm like, I guess that's where I'll meet people. <laughs> and uh, and me just trying to get some clients. Because I'm like, I, got, I don't know. I have to make money. So <laughs> yeah. I'll give really cheap wills. Um, and and that's, that's grown over the years into something that, that people call our office all year long. Saying, when's your will week? We want to get in there and, and, and take advantage of that. Yeah. And uh, so, so this year, in, in conjunction with uh, the panoramic plan and what we're working on there, we're, we're starting with that education component where we're making sure that people um, are, are getting equipped with the knowledge that they need to make good, solid decisions about their estate. Mm-hmm. And so we're doing these seminars that will be hosted at Rosini's Restaurant. We're giving a free meal at Rosini's. I mean, that's even yeah, better. I know, right? That's, that's right. <laughs> I know. Um, but you do have to get tickets. So yeah. it's just to okay. reserve your place. It's, it's pretty limited. Um, yes. Because it's it's just limited space. Sure. Uh, and so that's that's the week of February fourth, I think, to to thirteenth, if I remember correctly. No, it's no. the seventeenth, eighteenth, <laughs> and twenty first. Thank you. Go to our website. No. So, 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 our Facebook so page. on Facebook page. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. we should have that in front of us. Yeah, I know. We're so busy doing all the other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's stuff. not that it's totally a test, but uh, <laughs> Whittle and Company is uh, your Facebook page. Uh, yes. That's yes. the one I was on. Yeah, but, yes. uh, yeah. Okay. So people that's, can that's check right. it out there. Yeah. yeah. And they get the yeah. seminar, um, okay. and then from there, there's there's great discounts moving forward um, yes. once they book their yeah. their sessions with with Jocelyn and with yeah. Catherine. Yeah. Um, so it's a it's a great way to get in there and to get into this uh, the panoramic plan mm-hmm. process that we've got to say we we rolled this out just at the end of last year. Yeah. Um, and already we've really had a, a, a quite large response to it. Um, yeah. Great. And yeah. so the, there's yeah. a need for it in the community. Um, it's not something we're just trying to sell. It's something that we're really people are they're recognizing that that makes a lot of sense. Let's yes. connect all the pieces together and make sure we've got a really well put together estate plan. Whether you know whether you're a young you're a parent with with young kids or you're a business owner or you're elderly, everybody needs to be thinking through all these different questions. Absolutely. And I I think from what I heard before is that uh, this isn't being done in a lot of other communities or any communities. Your your plan is really specific, uh, developed here, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's been really developed in-house. That's right. And we've been inspired by, there's other offices in other larger centers where they've started to work in this direction. Mm -hmm. Um, But as far as I know, this isn't something, there's other law offices in town that are great and have been doing estate planning for years and um, but I sure. do think that this is something additional that we'll be able to offer that really will meet the needs of people 
uh, better than than the the old way, the traditional way of, of sure. doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the world's changed. Uh, that's right. Just, yeah. just a little bit since right. I'm sure if wills were developed. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, not when was the first will? No, that's a terrible, <laughs> mean question to that's ask. Really I'm not going to add that. Yeah. That's a Google question. <laughs> yeah. Somebody can Google that right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Google it and put it in the comments. How about that? Um, but uh, awesome. Well, thank you so much of for coming course. out. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to look up the dates and we'll post that. Oh, perfect. Thank, thank you so you much. Know, and share that out. Um, and uh, yeah, is there anything else we want to? you want to share obviously the whittle and company um uh facebook yeah that's right uh, uh, is there our, else? yeah just our website it's just uh whittle.co so w-h-i-t-t-a-l.co um if you go there that also has the information about uh panoramic planning and and will week as well and you can click right to the the event page and get your tickets there too Brilliant. yes awesome Perfect. yeah so we're thank looking you for forward both. to it thank, thank you me. this has yeah. been great Okay, we'll wrap it up and say thank you. Thank you, John, again for watching. And if you have any more questions, these are the two to talk to. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.